Hey guys, I uh, thought I'd do you a video of how this works. Uh, excuse the mess. But the car itself and some of the bits aren't as clean uh, as they could be. I've given them a quick spruce over, um, but I thought it was worth trying to show you uh, what we've got here. It, it isn't too complicated, but unless you've sort of gone through this process before, you probably won't know uh, some of the nuances and some of the little bits and bobs that that might help you uh, on the way. So I thought I'd do like a, a kit thing first. So what what have you actually what have you actually purchased? Right, <laughs> it's quite a lot of kit here. Um, so yeah, I'll just go around the bag. Squirty bottle. Uh, so this is for nitro, which is what the car runs off. It's not petrol. It's nitro. Um, that's empty. This is. Uh, you, obviously you can have the, the OptiFuel, which is nitro. Um, you've got to be careful where you store some of this stuff. It doesn't want to be anywhere too hot and certainly doesn't want to be in direct sunlight. <clears throat> Garage is fine. Just, yeah, don't, don't overheat it. So usually what I do with this is I, I just, you know, tip this upside down, squeeze the bottle and then let it out and it will suck the fuel into here. And then I use that to, to fuel the car. Oh, it's got the, the remote control which is currently set up to work with the the transponder in the car and um, there are a load of settings for this i will uh i mean you, you will find the um the instruction manual online it's a pretty decent control it's quite old now but i've used it with a number of radio control cars worth checking that the voltage is 5.9 to 6.2 um i've just put some fresh batteries in this so this should be absolutely fine, uh, but let me know if you've got any issues. You can see there's like steering and throttle trim, but I suggest that you do have a goose online for this. It should be good to go. Um, so you shouldn't need to make any adjustments, but I think one thing that's worth calling out is that this, this car is quite quick. Um, depending on how you tune it, it will get up to like 30 miles an hour. You could set the throttle trim on the controller to you know, go to 30% throttle or 50% throttle or 70% throttle, etc., cetera, um, so that you can build up to sort of full speed. There's a cat down here. I'll just quickly focus on this lump of the cat. There we go. You don't go at 30 miles an hour, do you, D? No. No, she doesn't. So, uh, yeah, so throttle trim, worth having a goose online. Maybe pull the throttle trim back slightly to begin with so that like as Lucas gets used to the speed, he can sort of slowly build it up, take it from there. Um, just I'll just start taking things out of here so you can see what I've got. I've got a few oily rags, like uh, they could do with going through the wash, but honestly, the, <laughs> there's so much like grease oil and random stuff on this this vehicle that it's, it's worth just having a few of these kicking around. Um, the carry case is... Uh, has got everything else that you need in it. You probably won't need to, like if you take the car somewhere to use, you probably won't need to take everything with you, um, but it, it can be useful depending on where you're going. This spray isn't Dettol surface cleaner. Um, it's called Muck Off. It's something that a lot of mountain bikers use. Uh, if the car gets really dirty, like if you throw it through a load of mud, um, it's worth cleaning it. I'll go into that in a bit more depth shortly because it can it can be a little time consuming to get it as clean as i'd like it to be you don't need to be quite as anal as i have been in the past it's not clean at the moment though to be fair so um just need to make sure that all of the moving parts are, are kept sort of clean and dust free if you can um and there's probably some some bits and bobs on the car that you want to remove before cleaning it um i haven't given you a brush because i've only got one brush and i use it for the, the full-size cars as well but it's probably worth having like a, a, a rubbish paintbrush or uh, I don't know, some some sort of brush that you can use just to get the dust uh, dust out. If you've got an air compressor, even better, um, just to just to try and keep it clean. Um, so on the top of the bag, you've got like these little elasticated, uh, elasticated things, bands, I don't know what you'd call them. I usually just wrap this around um, and just double it over. Little hooks here, so you can just unhook it. And then you yeah, free that side and then one at the back as well. I don't know how I've done this, but uh, over the wing, there we go. 
and then around there and then over here through here and then yeah so that's then doubled over so just uh, okay so the hooks on the other side for that one do, 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 do. as you can see uh, this one I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull it over the back of the car There we go. Uh, in terms of picking the car up, um, I would pick it up from the rear wing. If you can use two hands, which is easier when you're not holding a, a phone in your other hand, front wing and front suspension strut. You can pick it up from here, but just be aware that if you've used the car, this is going to be phenomenally hot. Um, so you, ideally, I would just get used to picking it up from here in the front suspension uh, or just from here. So, car down. I'll put that to one side for now. Um, I'll show you what else is in the bag first. Uh, make sure nobody tells Rosie that I used the kitchen table for this escapade. Right, so I'll shove that there. Uh, top of the bag, you've got like a, a flight case type thing. So you can pull this out uh, and then there's uh, wheels at the bottom so you can it's quite easy to move um, you can get into this compartment by just unzipping this I've never never bothered never needed to and then the main compartment you just unzip these two sides and you're greeted with uh, four boxes um, quickly run through these so bottom box Full of spare wheels. Uh, some of these are used, some of them aren't. They all fit the car, um, so you don't need to worry about that. Where you see uh, wheels like this, um, I've used nail clippers to take the inside three, uh, uh, sorry, the, the outside three and the inside two rows of, of grip over. So what happens is if you're on AstroTurf, you've got your wheels like that. As you go around a corner, the wheel goes like that as there's there's pressure put in the car if you've got tread on the outside of the wheel uh, the car flips and it will keep flipping because it sort of turns into the corner grips too hard and then goes so you sort of turn into the corner it slides a little bit but doesn't roll over and um, really that's only needed for astro turf though if it's on mud or uh, gravel or anything slippy, you don't need to bother with that. It's only AstroTurf, really. The wheels on it at the moment are AstroTurf. I've I've shredded these uh, on uh, tarmac as well. The ones with the... Um, well, in fact, <laughs> I was going to say the ones with the small grip, you'll ruin on tarmac. But to be honest, you'll ruin all of them on tarmac. Um, you can get tarmac treaded tyres. They look like road car tyres, to be honest. Almost exactly the same. Some of Lucas's other radio control cars will have... Similar stuff, all of the tyres I've got really are for mud, gravel, um, and AstroTurf. Um, so yeah, the truck's four-wheel buggy is four-wheel drive, so um, it'll send power through all four wheels, meaning that it sort of doesn't matter what wheels you put front or back. If you've got the wrong wheel for the sort of surface you're on, it will just, it'll just uh, completely shred it. Having said that, um, there's enough wheels here. Like they're not they're not too expensive. Um, they can be a bit of a pain depending on how you buy them. I'd strongly suggest buying secondhand ones off eBay. Some of these are new, some of them are secondhand. The new ones um, they come in three parts, so you get the the tire, the white sort of hub, and then there's like a foam in a liner. You have to put the three of them together uh, and super glue them. I don't know if you can. It's quite difficult to tell. There will be a line of super glue on each edge of here. To be honest, for the price of second-hand ones off eBay, you might as well do that. And the people that are racing these trucks, um, they'll use the tyres a few times and then put them on eBay, and they're great. Even when I was racing, I would take those tyres and then just practice with second-hand tyres. Um, like I say, I've got a couple of new sets, but honestly, I wouldn't... I wouldn't waste the money whilst getting used to it. Like if, if Lucas like gets gets into it and wants to do racing on different surfaces or is really you know keen on, on improving lap times, then 
that's the point of doing that. Otherwise, yeah, one eighth buggy tires is what you have. Uh, that's what you're after. If they stop rolling around, that would be useful. Just like that. Cool. So a drawer full of tires. This is quite a difficult one-handed. Okay, so <laughs> a drawer, a drawer full of uh, a drawer full of scary things. Um, cool. Rubbing alcohol, first aid, and antiseptic. Uh, Use that for for cleaning things. Um, again, some glue and things to um, help bond stuff. You shouldn't need to use either of these, to be honest. I would, again, I'd just store these for now. Won't worry too much about it. Um, this is silicon oil. So uh, shock tower oil. So the I'll go through this more detail as well as some of the point in time. These are fluid filled shock absorbers that um, so the, heart, the whole car was built by me. Um, from scratch so every single component was put together so these have got fluid in and a plunger that goes up they're then resisted by a spring and set by a, a, this thread here to, to dampen it over time they will leak um, hence you know the additional fluid some people will change fluid depending on the track and the grip and the circumstance and how hard you're hitting it but you know it's it's okay at the moment it's fairly neutral, it lands and it doesn't bounce around. If you want to change the shock towers, the um, I'm hoping, yeah, I'll, uh, I, I, it's worth reading this. I know it looks absolutely mental. So this is the instruction book that came with the vehicle. Um, this will talk you through how to do all of the, well, it talks you through exactly how to build the car from scratch, right? I didn't know what I was doing beforehand and it's it's worked perfectly well for me, so. Definitely read through this. <laughs> in terms of rebuilding parts on the car, honestly, just enjoy it for now. Uh, there's people at your local hobby shop that would be more than willing to help you. Uh, Techno is the the brand of the car, which is a quite a high-end race car, actually. Um, but it works for all circumstances, which is why I got it. The people that resell it are called RPRC. Um, they're in Derby. Uh, guy who runs it. I can't remember his name now. I want to say it's like Dan or someone. Yeah, Dan. Really, really nice guy. Really keen to get people into the hobby. Doesn't care whether it, you know you're just bashing it around a car park or you know taking it to fields or whatever. If there's a problem with the vehicle, um, you know, and I can't help if I'm not available or whatever, then you know definitely definitely have a word with uh, a word with Dan, and I can put you in contact with him. But that's what that is. Spare shock absorber fluid. Um, thread lock. So, a lot of these, a lot of the screws around the car are thread locked. Not all of them, some of them. Um, it it takes an absolute pounding, right? Um, so, it it just things end up with a huge amount of vibrations and moving. Hence, a thread lock. A couple of a couple of those. Um, some fairly bespoke tools. These are super strong, um, quite expensive uh, tools. So yeah, make sure you keep hold of these. The The vehicle will take generic Allen keys, etc. But some of the stuff, you know, like you can see the size of that torque, uh, torque end is quite small. The amount of force some of them want you to put in requires you to have a decent, decent tool. So that's what that's for. Um, this is one of the things for charging the LiPo battery. I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, I don't think you need to use this one. I think I've, I think the one you need to use I've probably got out. Same with uh, same with these connectors. I'll talk you through everything you need to do for charging in a minute. Don't worry about that. Uh, this is just a spare strip brace for inside the car. There's a lot of spares in here, right? So there's there's bits and bobs kicking around. Um, things break. It's easy to get a hold of the replacements. This is a fuel line. I've just cut this. Um, well, in fact, I've cut the one on the car. This is the spare. Uh, the one on the car looks like it could do with a bit of a trim, to be honest, but it's fine. Um, and then air filter. So these are pre-oiled. Um, at the moment, the car's, um, the car's got 
half a filter on it. So I'll just quickly show you that. So just take the R clips out. When I'm taking the R clips out, they're an absolute nightmare if you lose them. A lot of people, same as me, just put it on the rear wing. So you clip out and then yeah, just on the rear wing, if you can do that one handed. Take the top off, little clip at the back. So it just slots in and then goes down. Uh, I'm sure Lucas will know exactly how that all works anyway. So yeah, this is, this is the filter. So at the moment, I've just got the inner oiled bit. There should be an outer bit to this, um, which is the, the bigger of these two blue things. You can see there's one inside and then one outside. So it wants, in fact, it probably wants the inner filter looked at. It might be okay, it might need a clean, but it does want an outer one on. Um, so if you're going anywhere, well, in fact, it doesn't matter. I was gonna say, if you go somewhere dusty, you definitely want it, but honestly, it just put it on anyway. It won't make any difference to the performance and will stop any dirt getting into the engine. If you get dirt in the engine, the engine will be very unhappy and you'll need a new one uh, and they're not particularly cheap. That's it for that drawer. This drawer, <laughs> yeah, loads more kit I'm afraid. So um, again, this, this is all referenced in the instruction book. So there's more different shock fluids. Uh, tired glue, as I said earlier, that's... Oh, no, okay, I thought that might be dead, but it's not, it's fine. More shock fluid, you don't need to use any of this. Uh, air filter oil, so just a few dabs of that on the air filters before they go in. Um, ah, I have left you some brushes, I was lying earlier. So yeah, feel free to use these brushes, and honestly, it's just a case of you know getting in there, cleaning it out. If you've got an air compressor and you can blow a lot of the dust out, great. Um, these, I, I don't know whether you will, you will want to use these. So this is for setting the camber uh, of the wheels. So you sort of put it on a flat surface, you put this under the car so that the, um, this bit is touching the underneath of the chassis and then it will give you um, the height of the car, front to back. And then this one is for the camber, front to back. So you might be able to see, it's a bit difficult maybe at that angle. And I've got like a fisheye lens on. But the, 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 the front wheel's like sort of that and the back wheel's like that, right? It, they don't sit straight um, and that's by design. Random piece of foam, I'll make, make sure you make good use of that. Uh, what else have we got in here? Um, some useful random Allen keys. Uh, this probably does need replacing. Um, these are cheap. I would I would get one of these um, from uh, somewhere online. I'll, I will send you a link, and if I don't, remind me. I've broken this one. They are cheap. Uh, you can I don't know if you can see the end of this is this is cracked. So what what this is usually used for is taking the glow plug at the top of the engine. Uh, is that one? These two are not so useful. Uh, this one, however, fits the fits the wheels. So I've kept this one for this, for the wheels. And then I've got a, a, another tool that I use on full-size car again to get the glow plug out. But yeah, it's like six quid or something. Um, got another one here. I think this one's, this one's broke as well. Yeah, you can see a slight crack there. I will take the glow plug out using one of these and show you what on earth I'm talking about. Another oiled filter that isn't particularly, isn't dead, isn't new either. Um, some spare screws. I never have enough screws. Hairband, genuinely useful. I'll talk to you about that in a bit. Uh, craft knife, um, <laughs> unbelievably sharp. I'll leave it in there, but honestly, just, just be very careful, uh, as I'm sure you will do. Occasionally you'll get bits that you might need to trim. Um, just, just be aware of that. Um, these are covers for the exhaust. So I replaced the exhaust on this. You don't need to use them. Uh, but if you want to take the exhaust off, then you should, you should use them. Um, what is that spindle carrier hinge pin? And these are spare screws again. It's got the reference number, which is, I must have thought this was important at some point, so that's why it's in there. 
This is to hold the engine um, and the exhaust to the chassis. Um, there should be two of them. If there is only one, and there is, you can actually see here, this one here. So I shall add the, I shall add the other one. They're a bit of a nightmare to fit. Um, basically what this is doing is just holding the exhaust around the engine under the heatsink and then onto the other side as well. One is enough, but you know, they wouldn't have put two there if they didn't want you to use two. So <laughs> she'll do that. This tool, again, uh, quite expensive. You need to use this to undo the shocks and do the shocks back up uh, and take the uh, ball links out, which are an absolute <laughs> nightmare. Again, um, you may not need to do that. So uh, I'm just trying to see if I can find one of the ball links. Oh, my phone's about to run out of battery. I shall come back and we shall continue.